Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Pancast. In episode 5, we discussed why logs are your best friend, the troubleshooting approach, and the importance when it comes to debugging firewall issues. Today, we look at threat logs, and we have a guest, Faze Asmi, who is part of the threat support team. Faze will give us insights into threat logs. Welcome, Faze. Thank you for having me, John. I appreciate the introduction. Uh, let's start off with our day-to-day tasks. Normally, we exchange information over the internet or internally amongst our peers. We download or upload files such as PE, portable executables, Microsoft Office, PDF documents, and so on. At most, we attach files via email or have some experience with transfer protocols such as FTP or SMB. Sometimes, malicious email can look legitimate, which makes it difficult to differentiate and increases the likelihood that someone will fall victim to a cyber attack. Palo Alto Network's next-gen firewall can prevent vulnerable systems with its anti-spyware and vulnerable protection profile. Furthermore, antivirus and wildfire features have the capability to protect users from downloading malwares, viruses, and trojans. With all the available features, it is important that the firewall locks all the necessary events. In this episode, we will be discussing antivirus logs in particular. I have had some experience before when troubleshooting strata cases. I've seen that there are three types of antivirus logs. Can you explain these, please? Yes, you are right. There are three types when navigating the threat logs. One being the virus type, second being the wildfire virus, and lastly is the ML virus. The virus type signature is the antivirus signatures that are available in the content update package. Once it is downloaded and installed on the firewall, it will block any sample that matches the signature. Our antivirus package is constantly updated. It will not only include the newly discovered malwares, but also replace the old signatures. Um, for example, malicious samples that have been quite some time since it was last uploaded to the wildfire by our customers would be rotated out from the content package. Uh, the reason being is because the firewall data plane can only hold a limited number of signatures. Um, basically, starting from PanOS 10 and with wildfire subscription, Firewall can retrieve the latest wildfire signatures in real time as soon as they become available. Otherwise, signatures for newly discovered malware are generated and distributed every five minutes, which Firewall can retrieve and install this every minute. If you do not have a wildfire license, signatures are made available within 24 to 48 hours as part of our antivirus content updates, as long as you have an active threat prevention license. In the release note, you will see the newly introduced signatures listed under the new category, whereas the replaced signature are listed under the old category. That is useful. We can always refer back to the release notes for verification. Can you elaborate more on how users are protected when the signatures are no longer available? What does it mean when the signature is in replaced status? That's a great question. Uh, well, it can mean two things. One is either that the signature have been disabled, meaning that it is no longer valid, either due to false positive or the verdict has been flipped from malware to benign on the Wi-Fi side. The second reason would be that it is currently marked or identified as malware by Wi-Fi, but no longer available in the antivirus content update that is currently installed on the firewall. You would see that the log showing as the Wi-Fi virus type, which indicates that the signature are retrieved from the cloud. Let me repeat. Uh, wildfire signatures allow our customers to retrieve the signature as soon as they are generated, that is in real time, or as early as every five minutes, depending on the PanOS version. When I see ML virus in the threat logs, that is referring to wildfire inline ML, right? How is this different from the previous two types you talked about? Yes, ML virus refers to wildfire inline ML. Um, in a nutshell, it offers protection in real time. It detects malicious file dynamically and evaluates through machine learning on the supported file type. Each inline ML model evaluates the file detail, uh, decoder fails, the pattern of the file, eventually formulate a high probability classification of the file. Under the wildfire analysis profile, if you configure the file types analyzed by wildfire inline ML to be forwarded to the cloud for inspection, the false positives are automatically corrected as they are being received. It is important that any false positive can be learned by ML, eventually corrected and reduced over time. If you continue to see the ML virus alert for the file that have been classified as benign by wildfire, do contact Palo Alto Network Support. Given a scenario whereby I see a lot of threat logs, and based on your explanation, 
I have now identified it is somewhat related to AV signatures. But what should I do next? I'm glad that you brought it up. Our antivirus signature is based on a byte pattern or string that is generated from the malicious sample analyzed by Wildfire. Threat Vault would be the best place to start as the information related to the signature available to the public. You may search for the unique track ID. You should see the SHA-256 hash of the associated malware sample. With that information, you can compare the hash listed on Threat Vault with the AV logs that you are observing on the firewall. With that information, you can verify if the file you are downloading or transmitting is listed on the Threat Vault as one of the hashes. If yes, uh, review the Threat Logs, verify the corresponding traffic. Verify the user ID, source and destination IP address. Check the protocol to have a better understanding if this is an expected traffic or not. This should determine the next plan of action. Okay, let's say that once I've checked the Threat Vault, the hash matches, and after further investigation on the Threat Log, it's determined that someone in the organization accidentally clicked to download malware from what seems to be an unverified site. That's a true positive scenario, right? Yes, this is a true positive. The threat log would indicate that such sample being blocked. Now that you have identified it wasn't intentional, perhaps further awareness training would help to avoid this from happening again in the future. How about if it's a false positive, when it's unexpected and the file is considered to be trusted and should be allowed? Okay, if the file has a malware verdict by wildfire and you need to allow it urgently, you can set an exception on the antivirus profile to allow the trusted file. At the same time, you may request for the file to be re-evaluated. You submit the verdict change request via wildfire. Either you do it from the web UI or directly from the wildfire portal. On the firewall web UI, there should be a, a report incorrect verdict button where you can submit under the wildfire submission log. Alternatively, you may log in into the Wildfire portal and submit a verdict change request for a specific sample. This can be done without opening a support ticket. Okay, these are true positives and false positive scenarios. How about when the hashes listed in the threat vault are not matching the file I'm transmitting? What does that exactly mean? Okay, this is a classic case of a signature collision where the signature byte pattern generated for the benign file that you are transmitting matches with an actual malware associated with the signature. Now, you may need to assess the risk and validate further. How important is the file to you? How many users are impacted by failing to download the file? If you need to allow the file urgently, you may set an exception on the antivirus profile. This will allow you to download the file specifically in your environment. If it's affecting a lot of users, you may open a support ticket with Palo Alto Networks to request for the signature to be re-evaluated and potentially disabled. Do take note, it will take at least 24 to 48 hours for the new dynamic content updates to be available with the replace signature. If it's important to use, set an exception. It's always recommended. Great information. Thank you, FaZe. So to wrap up, what are the key takeaways? Let's break it down to three key takeaways. Identify, investigate, and intervene. Firstly, identify that there are three types of antivirus locks displayed as virus, wildfire virus, and ML virus. Then you investigate the corresponding traffic by leveraging the threat logs to determine potential true positive, false positive, or signature collision. Lastly, once you have understood what kind of traffic was and the expected behavior, intervene to resolve the issue, whether to set an exception, submit a verdict change through a wildfire, or raise a support ticket with Palo Alto Networks. Thanks again, FaZe. That was a very informative session. Pancasters, as always, for more information related to Pancast, the written transcript and reference links, head to live.paloaltonetworks.com. Make sure to subscribe and stay tuned as well, as we'll have FaZe back in the near future to discuss other types of threat logs. Bye for now.